Hello lovely people, welcome back. This is Kweku. I am a pharmacist. On this channel, I bring you healthcare information as well as information concerning your prescriptions and over-the-counter medications. Uh, this is intended to be for informational purposes only and therefore still seek medical advice from your primary care physician if the need arises. Today's video is going to be a quick and short video about uh, metforming. What I'm doing uh, is I'm compiling a library of the most commonly prescribed medications and just discuss them, look at their side effects, the uses and the warnings as well as some pro tips if you're on some of these uh, medications. So I'm going to start off with med, uh, metforming. It tends to be one of the most highly prescribed and also has a lot of questions that are generated every day on a daily basis in my regular practice. So um, here we go. Let's just launch into metforming. Well, here we are with metforming. And I guess the most logical place to begin will be uh, what it is and what it is used for. And with respect to what it is used for or its indications, I divided it into two categories, uh, the FDA approved uses or use and as well as the off-label uses. What off-label uses are, are, you know, maybe sometimes a medication is, up, uh, is not necessarily approved for a particular condition, but they realize that over the years it is effective for that purpose and it is safely used for that purpose. I'm sure most of us are already aware that metformin is FDA approved for the treatment of type 2 diabetes. It was actually first approved in 1994 to be used for such and it is also the first line of treatment recommended by the American Diabetic Diabetes Association when it comes to the treatment of diabetes and it is usually used either as a single agent or in combination with other agents to help control diabetes. When it comes to the non-FDA approved uses or the off-label uses, um, it is used actually for the prevention of diabetes mellitus. So sometimes some people are diagnosed as being pre-diabetic and they do not check all the boxes for having diabetes, but they, their condition or their progression of their diabetes can be slowed down by them taking metformin. It is also used in gestational diabetes, which is very important because uh, hyperglycemia or too much glucose in the blood during pregnancy can negatively affect the, the baby. It is also used in uh, PCOS or what is called polycystic ovarian syndrome and uh, also as um, you know, a way to control weight when it comes to antipsychotic induced weight gain. I kind of did a video on medications that cause weight gain and I discussed this in detail so I'll link that video in the, in the description. You can check it out. It is also used for obesity due to insulin, what they call hyperinsula obesity. The next area we're going to look at uh, is how it works or its mechanism of action. Well, it works in three main ways. Number one, it decreases glucose production in the liver. The liver produces uh, glucose by a process called gluconeogenesis and metformin has the ability to minimize this pr uh, process. It also decreases the intestinal glucose absorption. In other words, you, when you take metformin, you tend to absorb more, less glucose, less glucose, let me emphasize, from your intestines. It also works by increasing insulin sensitivity, which is very key because a lot of reported diabetes these days is as a result of decreased insulin sensitivity. So the ability of metformin to actually make insulin more sensitive is definitely a good way by which it works. The next area, which I'm sure a lot of people have been waiting for or waiting on is uh, the side effects. And I group them into two categories. The common, which you're gonna see more frequently, or the, more, the less common but more serious ones. With respect to the common side effects, the main ones are what affects the gastrointestinal system or the GI. Uh, and these include diarrhea, flatulence, bloating, indigestion, uh, for some people nausea and or vomiting, uh, as well as uh, a molar absorption syndrome. And I'm gonna hit a little bit on this one because what, what one of the questions that I get a lot of the time is what are the long-term effects of taking metformin and we realize that mole absorption or your inability to absorb most of the, the nutrients that you get in food or some of the important nutrients in food and I'm going to mention particularly B12 and I'll kind of hit on it later as we go on in the slide. So metformin actually has the ability to cause small absorption syndrome or make you not absorb some of the important nutrients that is necessary. Uh, some people complain of a headache, some people just general feeling of discomfort, uh, weakness, or loss of strength. 
Some of the more serious side effects include uh, lactic acidosis. Lactic acidosis is a situation where your body either overproduces or is not able to get rid of lactic acid fast enough from the body, which causes a buildup. This is generally a medical emergency and it is something that if you know somebody is experiencing, it is worth calling the emergency services. Uh, some of the signs that you look out for for a person who you suspect is undergoing lactic acidosis would include a, a fruity smelling breath. Uh, sometimes there'll be confusion. They may be jaundiced. That means they may have uh, maybe a yellowing of the skin or sometimes of the white of the eyes and even sometimes trouble breathing. And like I said, this is generally a medical emergency and should be treated as such. The other serious side effect of metformin, which is worth taking note of, is uh, hepatitis or inflammation of the liver. Or in some cases, there will be abnormal liver function tests. I must say here that these two conditions are very rare. However, if they do okay, they require the medical attention that they deserve. On the whole, metformin is generally considered safe and most people take it without any issues. It doesn't have that effect of causing hypoglycemia or making your blood glucose go too low as is common with some of the other diabetic medications. The next area we're gonna look at is the precautions or the warnings or what is sometimes referred to as contraindications. Metformin is contraindicated in patients with severe renal dysfunction, uh, which is typically sometimes defined as a glomerular filtration rate or GFR less than 30 milliliters per minute. So this GFR measures how quickly the kidney is able to clear things from your, your body or your system. The higher the number, the more quickly the kidney gets rid of things. In renal dysfunction, this number is reduced significantly for, and sometimes even going below 30. Since metformin is excreted by the kidney, if you have a low GFR, that means that there's a chance of you accumulating higher than usual no levels of metformin in your body, which may lead to unwanted effects. There is also a warning to stop using metformin in cases of nausea, vomiting, and dehydration. This has pretty much got to do with the increase in the risk of developing lactic acidosis that we talked about earlier. Also, there is a warning to avoid using patients with evidence of hepatic or liver disease. This has also got to do with increasing the risks of developing lactic acidosis. Another warning that is worth mentioning is that metformin should be discontinued before using any iodinated contrast agents. So you're going to have a, a test done which involves iodine. It is recommended that metformin be discontinued before uh, this test is done. Uh, after the test, you are more than welcome to continue using your metformin as prescribed. Next, we're going to look at some best practices while you take metformin. Like most other medications, it needs to be stored in a closed container uh, in a, at room temperature, away from heat, moisture, and direct sunlight to avoid damage to the medication. Also, the extended release tablet is recommended for people with the GI side effects that we discussed earlier. The extended release tablet tends to be a little bit easier on the tummy relative to the immediate release, and therefore that one is recommended for such people that have problems with um, the GI side effects. It is worth noting that the extended release tablets should be swallowed whole and should not be crushed, chewed, or anything like that. It is also best to take this medication with food or with some food in the stomach just to mitigate some of the GI side effects. Also, consider taking a B12 supplement. This may be something that you will have to discuss with your provider to see if it is appropriate for you. This is to mitigate the lower than normal levels of B12 that is very common with people that are taking metformin. So there you have it folks. I believe I've been able to give you a very high level overview of the medication metformin. Uh, let me know in the comment section if there is anything in particular that I missed that you want me to talk about or if there are any specific questions. Also, let me know what you want me to work on next, what medication that you're highly interested in. And also, please consider liking this video, sharing with somebody who may find it useful, as well as ultimately subscribing to support this channel. Thank you so much.